Hello, hi, I'm Punita here from Huawei Global Training Center. And today we're going to discuss about the content troubleshooting IP transmission faults part four. So let's look into what are the IP transmission faults. And this is divided into a few category. So we're going to look into the node B and E node B sites. So we have the transmission link, which is divided into control plane and user plane. So control plane will be mainly related to signaling fault. And user plane is mainly handling the service fault. So they are divided into the layers. So we have ETH layer 1, link layer layer 2, IP, SCTP and S1, AP. This one is for control plane. They are layer 3. So the alarms that is executed from these layers will be physical layer fault is on the layer 1. IP address conflict will be at layer 2 or 3 onwards and SCTP fault. So all these are related to the protocol stack alarms. So this is signaling related. And for the service related protocol stack, they are the same. We have layer 1, layer 2 and layer 3. And the alarms will be related to user plane fault. Example, IP path fault and user plane fault. But for the ETH link layer and IP, they are same the control plane for the user plane just that the fault itself will differ based on signaling related fault and service related fault so let's look into transmission fault location ideas so fault location ideas will be divided into segmentation fault location idea and hierarchical fault location idea so in actual network failure troubleshooting, first we must try the segment method to determine the point of the failure and then troubleshoot by layering or other methods. So let's look into the first transmission fault location idea. The first idea, which is segmentation via ping and trace route. So segmentation method is the most important fault isolation means in transmission problem troubleshooting. So we must test the ping test. So we have to test from a certain range of the destination and local to see whether you are able to reach the other end. So it will be usually between local and peer and in between we have the route. So let's look into the example of how we can ping a network. So first we need to have the information of the local and the peer. So let's look for the SCTP link to gather some information about local and peer. So in this case, we have the SCTP link. with the local IP and the peer IP. So we're going to use this as a main database to do the ping test. For, for the ping test, so we're going to fill up some information. Slot will be related to the UMPT card, slot 7. Source IP, we will follow exactly the SCTP link information, fill up the IP. So this will be the local IP address. Source IP is equivalent to the local IP. And destination IP will be the peer IP. So when we run, if there is a problem, there will be and a warning or indicator. Like in this case, I couldn't be able to ping because the BS, the base station is automatically establishing the OM channel. So that is a transport related problem over here. So they advise to try again later. So this is an example of the ping activity. So besides ping, so let's look into the other explanation about the ping. So transmission fault location ideas about ping ping is known as packet internet grouper. It is used to check the TCP IP network connection and device reachability. So the source device will send, uh, send the ICMP request packet 
to the destination device and wait for the echo packet. So example, we have A base station with a B server. So that is an IP for this A device and that is an IP for the B device. So you are sending a packet with MAC header, IP header, IC, MP packet and MAC and frame. So B is reachable or not, A need to check. So there will be a request sent to check whether, whether can I reach B or not? Can I reach this IP to the other IP? So B has to respond. So the response is actually the reply here. Yes, I'm here. So once there is a response is there, then only you are able to send the packet to the B. So it's like a confirmation whether the B is reachable or not. So that is a ping test. So let's move into the second session, which is trace route. So trace route mainly we will look into the route information. So for test packets from the host to the destination, passing the gateway. So example, in this case, we have server A with an IP address. They are passing through two routers, router A and router B. So router A have their own credential and router B has their own credential. And the destination is B, which is Ethernet. So there will be a request sent with a TTR, time transition mayor. All right. This one is the time TTL. The time transition layering so this is one millisecond that is a time out so they will send a request to route a and route b to check whether it is reachable or not and how many routes they are going through all right so let's look into the trace route information so from the actual site trace route command basically will need only destination ip so we don't need to add the source IP because we are only checking the routes here. So from this scenario, we are going to take the same peer IP. And the slot will be still 7 UMPT. So I'm just going to test with the destination, the same destination. So, so due to the transport, which is still establishing the OM channel, it is advised to retry the message again. So probably we wouldn't able to see the routes over here. So this one is related to the OM channel. So probably it's trying to establish the connection to the automatic OM channel. So there is a transport related problem here, the maintenance link. Currently is trying to establish the OM channel. So let's look into the second idea. Second idea of getting the location idea will be related to hierarchical. So this will be able to check signaling with MME, data with serving gateway, packets with MME and IP clock server data. So they are related to the lower layer. So low, usually lower layer fault, which is related to layer one, layer two, and this IP onwards is going to be layer three. So they will lead to higher layer fault. So it could be related to wrong cabling, connectors, signal level, coding, clock, framing from layer one. Layer two could have the problem related to port status, ARP configuration, which is related to MAC layer and VLAN. And for IP, it could be related to wrong IP address configuration, mask and routing table. So this lower layer fault could lead to higher layer fault, which is related to signaling, data and IP clock server. So now let's look into some background information about VLAN. So VLAN has following advantages. Suppress, suppresses the broadcast storm, improve transmission security, provides differentiated services. Example, each of the color here represents different VLAN. So they might be carrying different QoS type. So the different colors. Example, I have four types of QoS here, which will be carried by different VLAN. So for the background information about routing table, so we have IP and ADA data, and we have different routes that before it reaches the peer. So this one is the local IP. This is the peer IP. So the routing table consists of network IP address, pro, output interface and next hop. 
So let's go into the Q&A session, true and false. So segmentation method is the most important fault isolation means in service problem troubleshooting. Is the statement true or false? No, it is false. The second question, virtual local area network is a data exchange technology derived from the traditional LAN. The answer is yes. So, troubleshooting IP transmission fault, the summary will be that we have discussed about IP transmission fault in this section, transmission fault location ideas about the trace route ping and segmentation, hierarchical methods and background information. So, that's all from me. Hope you enjoy the session. Thank you and bye.